Now, I have never done a worst to best to this extent before, but we're doing every single spinnable bloodline from worst to best. I may have missed one or two bloodlines. Feel free to comment below if I did miss it. If you guys think any rankings are wrong, feel free to comment and why. I'm actually really interested to know what you guys think about the bloodlines of the game. And actually does help me, you know, get a better overall consensus of the bloodline. So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like, but subscribe, and hosting this guys. Let's get right to the video. All right, so since there are so many spinnable bloodlines in this game, I'm going to go ahead and list a few off. So there's going to be the bad and mid tier now coming in the bad tier i'm going to be listing off the bloodlines in a short description of them just so it doesn't take up too much of the video you have kaijin the monkey bloodline minakami the puppet abuser bloodline karada the fat boy bloodline where you can turn into a boulder and just run over people okami the puppy dog bloodline that people only use to have a dog by their side seishin the bloodline that literally everyone forgets about constantly for some reason hair the bloodline that used to be super super overpowered but it's really just not that good anymore steam the bloodline that has never been good actually i don't know that for a fact it may have been good at one point but definitely not my span on shit of life gold sand the shizen wannabe menza the one that actually has a lot of potential but it really just isn't that great overall inferno the one where if you're named inferno you're a nerd bolt this ball that actually got buffed recently but it's still really not that great because i do think the 1.8 hand signs that it has really doesn't didn't make it much better nature the bloodline that just for some reason never hits people mud it does have a lot of damage on the mud dragon but other abilities are like borderline terrible asher storm the single worst rare bloodline in the entire game that's a title right there and then you have bubble the bloodline that really just doesn't fit into the meta whatsoever i heard if you like the video right now you get 20 million times luck when you spin bloodlines in shindle life but you have to do it right now also subscribe while you're at it all right so now going on to the mid tier i'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on why they're so mid but i'm not gonna you know take up that much time on them obviously you have crystal 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 overall just has one really, really good ability. The other ones have either been nerfed or just don't hit half the time. Atomic has a really good 45 damage, 45,000 damage ability, which is the first or second ability of it. It's the one where it just shoots out lasers at people. The other abilities are okay, but they're really not that great. Explosion, the second ability is one of the single best elemental KG abilities in the game. <laughs> oh man, I'm allergic to mid bloodlines. But the second ability is an insanely good elemental KG ability, but the other abilities are just kind of bad. Ice, it, like the other ones, I think all of the ones with this are going to share the similar thing of where either all of the abilities are just slightly below average or average or it only has one really good ability lava i do think that lava overall is a very average damage kg moveset clay i think clay is very good for just annoying people or just flying around the map but in pvp it really isn't that great and in pve it also isn't that great you have vine one of the most troll ball knights of the game because you can actually go under the ground but in pvp pve it's just really not that great aided sun mud aka variety mud obviously it's a meme in this game but it really just isn't that great overall but it can be useful in some different situations i guess you have ghost karashi one of the other single worst rare bloods in the game it really doesn't really have an ability that shows like you know comes forward and is super op but it's an okay move set overall glacier it has one really good ability the other abilities are just borderline unusable eternal is another one where it does have a really good ability which is actually the c spec of it but the actual other abilities aren't that great the third ability has too much end lag third ability is like a negative 10 out of 10 jokai is just kind of a very average bloodline overall there's not really much pros about it but there's not much cons either ink when it actually works is very very good but that's the thing when it works dokai now this one actually is a funny one because it falls in and out of the meta because the silence ability of it is very very overpowered sometimes but when it's out of the meta it's okay overall when it's in the meta it's absolutely busted oh man i got that leon haircut from resident Evil 4 going on right now guys you have Kanchu. Kanchu is overall a pretty decent bloodline because it can be used against people that don't really know how to properly charge their chi Paper is a really, really high damage EKG. It's borderline able to be on the list, but it does kind of have drawbacks to it. Like some of the abilities just really aren't that, you know, useful against some of the better bloodlines in the game. Kakatsu, this one's just kind of a mainly M1 KG bloodline, and there's like 15 million M1 KG bloodlines in the game now. Azim Seko, this actually got buffed. If it wouldn't have got buffed, it would have been in bad, but since it got buffed, the, the third ability is actually like it's it's actually good now. Like it's like 0.5 hand sides, instantaneous stun ability. It's actually good. Like, trust me, you guys should go use it now. Sriracha Akuma, obviously, guys, this bloodline got buffed, but the second ability having no hit stun means that this is actually a very mid bloodline still. Uh, once they add hit stun to the second ability like it should have, it would be actually good, but for now, it remains bad. Or mid, I guess. Sabru, now, the only thing Sabru has going for it is the C-Spec. The C-Spec is kind of like an unblockable, you know, stun starter, but there's like 15 million unblockable stun starters in the game, especially with all the Kenjutsus. Now, the PvE only tier, this one is going to be obvious, guys. This one is for for the ones people that want to know what the best pve 
believe all that's are apollo sand you have the third ability the c-spec really good against bosses emerald you have the third ability really good against bosses the second ability my bad smoke you have the traveling aspect of smoke that's actually really good for pve and you have a xeno dope guy obviously guys the c-spec is absolutely amazing all right so starting off this worst the best at 35th place is going to be black shock there's not much to say about it it's overall a pretty decent bloodline now that after the after they buffed it it does have its faults but the main aspect of this actually relies on the z-spec where the z-spec is actually pretty good like the z-spec i'll have my mouse over him boom it's just kind of a combo starter it does bypass block and all that stuff and overall it's a pretty decent bloodline now but the reason why it's going to rank last is because there's just much better in the game still the company 34th place is going to be giovanni shizen now giovanni shizen is going to be coming in 34th place mainly because the second mode damage was nerfed look at this damage it's it's terrible compared to what it used to be you guys may be looking at that like oh wow that's so much damage no that that's bad the damage is bad now uh the actual abilities of giovanni are really just not that great overall and i do think it deserves 34th on this list now coming to 33rd place is going to actually be shadow now shadow is going to be here mainly honestly because i would actually put this in pve only but the actual abilities are good for pvp like the stun stuns for a long time you do have a yoinker ability like shadow is a good pvp bloodline but they're definitely just better because it's just a very stun oriented bloodline but it's definitely not bad now coming in 32nd place is going to be cobra now cobra actually recently was buffed it did receive some buffs i do actually think that cobra is still not that great as a bloodline but as you guys can see cobra the first ability does actually do a lot of damage now they did fix the chi drain issue it used to drain a ton of chi they did fix it so cobra cobra now i would say it is actually a pretty usable bloodline i mean cobra definitely had its faults before it still does have its faults but it definitely could be a lot worse in all honesty like it could be worse it, it's definitely a very usable bloodline now they're coming to 31st place is actually going to be sound now sound's going to be coming to 31st place because the actual abilities were damage nerf now just because they were damage nerf doesn't mean that it's still it's a bad bloodline now you can still kind of just rope it into your combos and stuff like that but it definitely isn't as good as it used to be now coming to 30th place is going to be kenichi right here now kenichi i think it's a very solid 30th place bloodline just because uh, oh that ability completely missed just because the abilities really aren't the best in the world but you know even though some of the abilities have gaps you can still use them properly i do think it is a very mode carry bloodline though now coming to 29th place is going to be kamaki now kamaki suffers from a lot of different things like uh it just it's be, i think it's received some secret nerfs like because the c-spec does no damage now web spec is the same so there's that the first ability is still a pretty good combo starter ability because it does block bypass and all that stuff block break now the second ability i i'll say this the second ability used to be insanely good but they added a five second cooldown to it um i'm not really sure why but they added a five second cooldown to it so that's kind of a major flaw with it now because you used to be able to spam it on them over and over and over again and also clicking on the cubes it yeah it, it you could use minikaze instead if you guys want to actually do that third ability is okay but it's kind of just a worse boromaki ability so kamaki while it does have a lot going on for it it's really not the best in the game but it's far from being the worst the coming to 28th place is going to be storm now storm's going to become a 20th place just because storm overall just it's a it's an okay bloodline now especially after the buffs it's an okay bloodline um i mean the third ability is an auto dodge now so that's cool i mean it has an auto dodge so that's quite you know that's cool like i said the coming to 27th place is going to be jeremaki now boom jeremaki awaken look at that oh yeah yeah jeremaki obviously the mode m1s are terrible literally the worst m1s in the entire game actual abilities of jeremaki are fine now like no they're not the best in the world they're definitely far from being the worst it's just the mode m1s are so bad that the mode is unusable because of it do you think you should reduce the damage though probably but the actual abilities of jeremaki are very fun to use it has very unique abilities overall i do think the third ability is still pretty bad but you know you can actually use it now so that's cool the coming in 26th place is going to be Wanziame. Now, Wanziame overall is a pretty good bloodline now. That's why it's going to be almost halfway through the list right here. The Z spec is actually super usable now. It has an insane range. You stay invisible throughout it. Your M1s drain the ton of chi from them. And the actual abilities of Wanziame did receive a buff. It's still, they still are not on par with the other abilities that are like them, but they're definitely a lot better than they used to be. And Wanziame, you know, while it does leave some to be desired, it obviously isn't the worst in the game. The coming in 25th place is going to be actually be nectar now nectar the reason why it's going to be so low even though the abilities are actually so good is because it is very hard to use these abilities properly they have a lot of you know downsides to them overall and i do think that nectar while it does have a very very high potential overall it's just really not that great the coming to 24th place is going to be jin shiki now jin shiki solid 24th place bloodline it's honestly going to be because of the counter ability the counter ability does kind of carry it to here because it is an ekg counter the other abilities of jin shiki are really not that great overall i mean like they have do have their faults and all that stuff 
stuff it the counters can work against it it's really not the great it takes a lot of chi but the actual counter of jinshiki is the best one because it does stun for a very 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 long time i think that is kind of the best part of jinshiki the stun time on the counter is it's it, it's immense that's kind of the best part about it the company 23rd place is going to be mecha spirit now mecha spirit second mode has been buffed as you guys could probably saw in the patch notes if you read those it was buffed it doesn't drain that much chi now that like that's very cool but i think what they also did simultaneously is uh nerf the damage and i'm pretty sure this damage is a lot less than what it was but yeah range up once obviously it's very 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 funny to use and it doesn't drain that much chi now so the second mode now is actually usable but the main thing that's carrying mecha is obviously going to be the first ability the second booty did receive that major nerf it's kind of hard to hit overall and the third booty is good for traveling that's kind of all it has going for it but ever since the mode has been buffed it definitely is not even close to being the worst ball in the game now frost fire frost fire is just a strictly worse scorch the abilities have longer cooldowns it doesn't do as much damage and sometimes the stun can hurt you more than it actually helps you the company 21st place is going to be scorch it's kind of the it's it's a very combo oriented bloodline it does tons of damage it has super low cooldowns on the abilities it's just strictly meant for combo damage but it's really good at that that's why it's going to be ranked here on the list the company 20th place is going to be kagoku now kagoku saw the 20th place right here guys so as you guys can see, the C-Spec does actually drain. Now, Kagoku is actually a very good bloodline overall. No, that's a joke. That <laughs> I got you guys, though. Now, 20th place is mainly because of the mode itself. The mode of Kagoku is actually really good. It's kind of just a... If you're not that good at PvP in the game, Kagoku mode will kind of carry you. Just because it does have, like, really good M1s, especially with the actual, you know, the Z-Spec of it. But the abilities of Kagoku really just aren't that great. The first ability has too much end lag to be worth using. The second ability is a pretty good pull move, but there's just better moves in the game. Game. and then obviously the third booty while it was taken off the auto of cooldown still really isn't that good but kagoku definitely you know could be a lot worse and he's dead the company in 19th place is going to be rune kachu now rude kachu is going to be in 19th place mainly because rude kachu the mode of rune is absolutely amazing i mean like the mode is like the mode's insane the mode is definitely the best part of rune it's very fun to use the actual booties are also pretty fun to use overall but i will say the actual moves they're very 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 they either have gaps in them like the second move they're either just very hard to use in a combo like the first move or they don't even use half the time they don't even work half the time like the third one but but I will say rune mode it does kind of carry the bloodline the company 18 place is going to be naramaki now the reason why it's going to rank here is because i am one of the people that believe naramaki is just sincerely not that bad but it does have a lot of issues especially even after the buffs it does have its issues uh i do think that if you use naramaki properly it, you know the first booty is terrible still uh, there's that but the actual booties of naramaki are not that bad like boom the c-spec like yes and then you click on someone and then boom it throws it out of perfect auto tracking he has modem ones that you know they're not that bad but the issue with naramaki is the second mode i'm not even going to go into it the second mode has a timer that needs removed once the timer of naramaki is removed it will be fine as a bloodline the covenant 17 place is going to be blood i'm not going to talk about blood that much it's because blood is kind of just a stun based bloodline uh, i mean it's really good as an ekg because the stun is actually very 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 useful but simply because it is a very you know it's or it's locked to you having to have other good bloodlines it kind of brings it down to the list but the fact it's such a good stun bloodline it has to be at least halfway through the list you know what i mean the company 60th place is actually going to be akuma now akuma is going to be coming 60th place just because akuma is just a really good overall good bloodline i mean it has an auto dodge that lasts an extremely long time it has a stun that actually you know it's a stun you can throw it into your combos the third ability does a lot of damage the c-spec also does a lot of damage akuma pretty much has everything you would ever need but it's far from being the best which is why it's going to be you know not that high on the list now coming to 15 place is going to be senko now senko 15 place bloodline right here the first ability is one of the single best combo starters in the game the actual others booty senko they're not that bad but the first ability is kind of what carries senko i mean the other booties are okay like they're usable but the first ability is definitely what carries it now coming to 14 place is going to be shiro glacier this is the skin sub zero right here oh my god oh yeah by the way i don't know if you guys know but my uh this the show the showcase over shiro got demonetized because they said it was graphic so that's cool i guess it's because sub zero or whatever but shiro glacier here uh it actually is a good blood bloodline overall it does have he just disappeared for a second it does have it's like issues with it obviously third ability is actually a stun on the stun will go down so that's actually a plus the obviously the mode of it is really good the weapon spec is one of the best weapon specs in the game but the actual abilities of shiro glacier they're very hard to hit sometimes they're very you know you're very like you have to set them up properly but if you do actually set them up properly the abilities are quite good and i will say shiro glacier it's definitely a pretty good bloodline that's why it's going to be in 14th place now coming to 13th place is going to be the odin savaru 
Saburu Bloodline. Now, Odin Saburu is going to become a 13th place just because Odin Saburu overall, it, it, it can be good for combos. Like the, the weapon spec does actually bypass block. The C spec actually does stun. You know, you could just rope that into your combos. The second booty is really good for starting combos. I would say avoid the third booty of Odin, but the other booties are so good to the point where it does need to be ranked 13th on this list. Now, coming in 12th place is going to be Pika Senko. Now, Pika Senko coming in 12th place right here. Boom, shaka laka. The booties are, you know, they're really good for avoiding damage and dealing damage simultaneously. The actual booties of Pika Senko, they're okay. I mean, like, they do a bit of damage. They're they're good for just like combo starting and stuff like that but i will say pika Seco overall just really you know even though it is good as a bloodline it definitely leaves a lot to be desired but it does do tons of damage the company in 11th place is going to be the riser kuma bloodline now riser kuma right here um yep it used to be meta it wasn't meta it used to be meta it wasn't meta and now it's just kind of okay the first ability is still an auto dodge it's a stun they actually did but finally buff the m1 so they no longer knock back so that's actually a huge plus the riser and i will say riser kuma is definitely a very decent bloodline it kind of just has everything you need in a bloodline itself has like an auto dodge counter has a good stun a good damage ability it has a decent mode so it has pretty much everything you would ever need it's a very good balanced bloodline the company to take place is going to be the bankai inferno bloodline now bankai inferno is going to become a 10th place just because bankai inferno overall it, it's just one of those bloodlines that keeps coming in and out of the meta based on how good breakaways are because the only good ability of bankai inferno that is worth throwing into your moveset is the first one which is a breakaway the other booties are far from being the worst in the game but they're definitely not good enough over th some of the other really good bloodline abilities now coming in ninth place is going to be alfie rama shizen now the reason why this is going to be in ninth place is um it would actually be higher but the mode drain is still so immense it still hasn't been changed for so long but the actual alfie rama abilities they're not that bad i mean they're they're very very they're they're good like if the mode drain was you know reasonable it would be a good mode but the actual abilities of alfie rama are kind of what carries it, especially after they made it so burn damage doesn't trigger counters anymore alfie rama is pretty good against counters now like alfie rama in general has always been an okay bloodline just in general the alfie rama meta was very unfun though but it is actually a good bloodline now so there's that the coming in eighth place is going to be sand now sand is going to be in eighth place simply because of the counter um by the way the tie on this is absolutely terrible which is kind of funny but sand while it does actually have pretty decent abilities like i, I like it has a block breaker it has an aoe stun ability like it has abilities that are good the thing that carries sand is actually the counter so boom counter counterlicious up in here it is an ekg counter that actually does play slot for a very long time and it does 50 000 damage it's just it's kind of carried by the counter in all honesty the company seventh place is going to be shiver akuma now shiver akuma solid seventh place button right here it's mainly meant for team fights in my opinion just because shiver akuma the actual abilities just you know i think that they're good oh i just completely missed i think they're good for stalling out fights which is a really good thing that doing team fights because you could stall out one person for a very very long period of time while the while the other person is getting hammered on by the other abilities so i th do think while shiver kuma is good for team fighting just rpg in general it's not the best 1v1 bloodline so that's why it's not going to be you know as high as the other one the company sixth place is going to be ryan akuma now ryan akuma actually is an extremely good bloodline but it does have its faults i mean like ryan akuma counter is actually pretty good in general because it does start your combos and stuff like that obviously the web spec is like the it's like the third ability and then the c spec is also like third ability, but it mode drains c spec has a ton of iframes by the way also the third ability of ryan akuma is it, it's an iframe ability it's a really good iframe ability and it also block breaks at the same time now the second ability of ryan akuma is a pretty good damage of dealing ability but i recommend sticking to the mode and third ability of Ryan Akuma if you actually want to use it. The coming to fifth place is going to be Bruce Kanichi. Now, Bruce Kanichi, solid fifth place bloodline right here. Um, there's a lot of people that actually do hate on Bruce. It's understandable because the, the abilities really aren't that great when you compare them to some of the other super OP abilities of the game. But Bruce definitely could, like, the bloodlines below Bruce are definitely not nearly as good as Bruce. Bruce has an instantaneous EKG combo extender. It has, like, some of the abilities are, like, you can only use in air combos, like the second ability, but if you're in mode, it doesn't work like that. But I'll just say it, bruce kanichi is a good bloodline it has abilities that are good for combos you could throw it into pretty much any moveset and the moveset will still work just fine and it overall it's just a it's just a really fun bloodline too now coming to fourth place is going to be doku ted goku after it has gotten its well deserved buffs i mean like mode m1 is no longer knockback the actual abilities are actually usable in m1 combos now the knockback stun you can combo off of 
I mean, like, I'll even throw the I'll even throw the second ability, the worst ability of Doku, into it. Boom! Slam him back, throw him back. But yeah, jokes aside, Doku to Goku is a lot better than it used to be. I mean, like, the first ability has always been good, but that was kind of the only good ability of it, because the mode was unusable with the M1 knockback. Uh, the counter was unusable because it didn't hit half the time. Ever since they actually added lock onto it, it, it has been a lot better, and Doku to Goku is a very solid fourth place bloodline. Now, coming in third place is going to be the Satori Akuma bloodline. Now, Satori Akuma, I mean, like, you guys know Satori already, especially after the buff. Satori is actually a very usable bloodline. Web spec still is really, really good. It's a block break, instantaneous ability. C spec still makes you go insanely fast. Um, it still has the no, no knockback M1. The actual first ability of Satori is really, 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 really good. Like, seriously, it's good. And then, obviously, you do have Satori counter, which, you know, it's a stun ability. Third ability of Satori is still the same, you know, exact stun ability of Satori. Like, Satori Akuma is just an overall really, really good bloodline, and I do think it deserves third place for this list the company's second place is going to be boromaki now boromaki right here is it's it's really really good now the first ability while the first ability really isn't that great it can actually start your combos if they're blocking the second ability is probably the most overpowered part of boromaki it's like a counter ability that you choose when it triggers it can also be you can also use it in your combos to extend your combos you can use it to start them if they're not blocking it makes a portal sometimes like the second ability of boromaki is insanely good but the thing that does kind of carry boromaki right now is the mode i do not have the mode but saboku can pop it up on the screen for you guys it has really good m1s it has a really good weapon spec that's a block breaker it's a good overall damage ability and the c spec is also pretty good so boromaki is a very solid second place bloodline for the actual spinnable bloodline lit now coming in first place as the best spinnable bloodline it should life is going to be naramaki six pass now you guys know why this is going to be in first place on here i mean like dude like what else is there to want in a bloodline it, it has absolutely insane damage output it has really good you know combo potential it has a really good counter attached to the actual mode that does tons of damage to people the first booty can actually start your combos i would recommend just avoiding the first booty if you can First ability, it, it's just kind of, it's hard to actually use, but if you can use it, it's a good combo starter. The second ability is the ability it, when it locks onto someone, it shoots 10 Goku balls at them. It's an overall a pretty good ability. And then frog moment. I mean, like this frog has been a pain, but I do think that like the frog is fun to use, but it's not fun to fight. That's kind of the best description of it. Anyways, guys, that's actually it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Bye-bye.